started with one on growing tomato soup to nuts, going from seed all the way to harvest, preserving the seed. We also did one on preparing um, summer, summer gardens and summer salad. We did the tomatoes, uh, tomatoes and cucumbers and lettuce. We had one on growing herbs. And my favorite one so far was actually uh, playing in the dirt. That was the one on composting that almost didn't happen because I got stuck in traffic. So, and this is the one on freezing, canning, and dehydrating. Uh, so just a little bit about Eric and myself. We both have real full-time jobs. But this past season, we helped a lot of people with this soil. We did a lot of soil analysis. We actually built some raised beds for some folks. We did some tilling. And we set up some uh, container gardens, uh, as Eric did that for one of, one of the clients. So we have our cards up here if you need any gardening assistance, have any questions. We also have a YouTube channel. And we have a page on Facebook. So this <coughs> presentation is on freezing, canning, and dehydrating because every summer, August and September, you get the mother load of all this beautiful bounty. And you're trying to give tomatoes to your neighbor, but they're already up in their ears with tomatoes. So, uh, so this is the way that, I mean, every, every Christmas I have my, my, my family over on, on Christmas Eve. What do we eat? I'm Italian, so we're eating pasta. And I'm using that can, the, the sauce that I, that I can, my, my own homemade spaghetti sauce, and nothing tastes better. Uh, the same thing, you know, you, you plant, I don't know if anybody has, has mint, but you, I planted, I bought, a, ended up buying a, a plant from, I think it was Walmart or something years ago, and I, I have a cinder block raised bed, and I planted it in one of the, one of the little cavities in the, in the cinder block, and every year that thing comes up. By the time I dehydrate, I, I think I, I probably get two or three, uh, of the big big bags of, of that dehydrated. So anyone needs any mint, <laughs> let me know. So this is just a way to preserve your preserve your harvest. We're, we're always looking for ways to be more sustainable. The other thing is um, these presentations, we do have some embedded uh, videos. And the presentation is uh, is meant to be interactive. So if anybody, you know, I don't I don't know it all. I, I've done a lot of canning and some some uh, some dehydrating and a lot of freezing and, and somebody else may have some experience that'll be helpful for the group. So okay so in this presentation we'll 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 actually uh, go uh, and learn about freezing your, your fruits and veggies, blanching them and, and, and why we do it. We'll go over freezing equipment and, and methods that are used. We'll also look into canning and pressure canning. Why would you pressure can when you can use a, a lobster pot and do the water bath canning and the difference between the two. And uh, all about, and canning is a lot about safety as well. We'll go over that because it's really, uh, if you know how to follow instructions, it's very safe. The food lasts in those jars for years. Uh, but if it's done improperly, you still may be okay. Then again, you may get very sick. It, you could, you know, you could get a lot of bacteria, bacteria in your food. And we'll also look at dehydrating, dehydrating equipment and some techniques to use for dehydrating flesh. Okay, so a lot of us get a ton of stuff, big zucchinis and, and, and you know, what, what do you do with, with a, a huge zucchini? What can you do to stuff it, you fry it, you steam it, you do whatever, but it seems like there's always more than you can, than you can handle. Uh, so, so basically, uh, what's done is blanching is a technique used to clean the food and release some of the flavor and preserve the color of the food in preparation for freezing. Uh, blanching is a cooking process where you, you cut the food, you boil it, or, or steam it until the color brightens. Then you submerge the food in, in ice to stop the cooking process. You 
drain it, and then you, you're bagging. So another thing in the freezing process is freezing changes the texture of the foods that have high water content. For example, if you froze, froze your lettuce, when it thaws, you can take it out and throw it against the wall and it's going to stick and it'll just be nothing but, but mush. It's, it's all water, you know, that's why it's so low in calories. Same with a watermelon. You, you take it, you pick it out and it's, it's perfect uh, juice. That's all you're going to have. Uh, another thing about freezing, it, it will keep your veggies fresh for about three months if you use a good quality freezer bag vacuum sealer bags, you, you can, you can uh, it, will, it will last longer. The rule of thumb is the cheap little Ziploc freezer bags, uh, they say that the good uh, food saver bags uh, last, they say five times longer. But it's a rule of thumb, you know when something freeze or burn when you look at it, basically when you use a good quality uh, freezer bag, it doesn't last a lot. So here are basically the, the three different uh, types of freezing methods. The first one is the, the good old fashioned cheap, uh, well I can't say they're cheap because they can get by them every roll, but the, the Ziploc or the generic freezer bags, and basically I always use a straw, get out as much air as you can, sometimes you, you, you kind of squish it down. Very inexpensive, you can open up, take some out and reseal the bag. But it doesn't have that long sh a shelf life. Sometimes you don't need a shelf life. You know, sometimes you you may have you know a few jalapeno peppers or what have you, and and you don't really need to, them to last for five months. So you know it can have its its pros. Um, you also have the handheld vacuum sealer. Uh, in, in each little vacuum bag, you, you put the food in and you seal it up, and then the the little machine. Um, you put it over a little hole in the bag and it sucks the air up. That's how they work. I, in, in some of those little machines uh, run by batteries and sometimes they're electric. That one, that particular one has batteries. The other one, the table vacuum sealer, is like this one here that I have. This is one version. And you stick the bag in here. You make your own bag. These are the bags and it's not really a bag, it's a roll. You make you custom make the bags depending upon the size. You have 11 inch and 8 inch. Also, this will suck the air out of the special containers that you use as well when you want to preserve something in a container. But they're quite pricey. I don't know. I think maybe this one was 150 bucks. Is that right, Eric? Yeah, roughly. Yeah, they're expensive, but they're worth it if you do it a lot. And I and I do it a lot. So, um, but the the food lasts lasts a long. Okay, so stuff you don't want to freeze, or you may think twice about freezing. Celery, this basically just has a high water content. All that stuff that we you're supposed to eat on a diet because it has a high, you know, it has a high water content, not not a lot of starch. Those are indicate those are foods that you really can't uh, uh, should freeze if you expect a good good texture. And potatoes, I know they're starches, but it has something to do with the uh, starch content. It, they just don't come out the way you want them to come out. Also, as far as the fruits go, uh, apples, uh, grapefruit, grapes, and some people want like frozen grapes. They put them in drinks, and those are fine, but if you expect to have a nice, you know, crunchy grape, it's not, it's not gonna happen. Watermelons, again, as I said. <coughs> and herbs as well, basically, the way that you, you can freeze herbs, but basically the way you freeze herbs is you, you'd make a pesto for a dip with your basil, you, you, you grind it up, make a pesto, add uh, olive oil, and then pour it in the ice cube trays and then take them out and, and seal those little ice cube trays up. But they don't, they don't do well if you just freeze the, the herb. So anyway, we do have some we do have some videos embedded in here. Uh, let's see if we can get them to work. No sound. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've got a minute. No, 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 no.
Is there sound? There was. Yeah, there was. I didn't do anything. Hold on. No, no, no. Function. Okay. Let's try. Take this out. Okay. Now. Well, I'm just trying to get the sound. I had this going five times. Ooh. No, no, it's not. Hold on. Here we go. Get out of here. Bear with me. We can talk through it if we have to. Okay, I'm gonna to have to talk this. It's better if I narrate anyway, right? Sure. Right. Okay. So what this lady's doing right now is she's cutting up. You'll see she's cutting up her zucchini because this lady has the mother world. So she's cutting up both zucchini and summer squash. As we all know, zucchini is summer squash in its own right. But she's cutting them all up and she's having them and she's putting putting them in her. So she's not putting it in water. She's really not blanching it. She's doing a quick she steam. She says that there is water down the bottom of it. I typically put mine in water for two to three minutes. Eric says he, that makes his mushy 
and he prefers the steam in. But um, it is a hot, hot steam, and there is water in the bottom, although it's not all the way floating at the top. Or if you go to boil it, just a very, very quick 30 to 40 seconds. Okay. Into water, 30 seconds out, and immediately into ice water to stop it from cooking. Okay. Yeah. It's called shopping. Yeah. You're, you're going too fast. So anyway, so she's going, and she's going to leave that on there. She has her timer set for three minutes. And I know how to fix this. Once it finishes film this clip here, exit out of the presentation and pull it back up. So she's so she's done. It's three minutes. She's taking it out, bringing out the excess water. Because if you freeze something with a lot of excess drops of water on it, it's going to get that freezer burn, that little snow stuff. It's not going to be a good thing. So. Getting all that excess water out of it. She's putting ice water. Is that ice water? Ice. Yeah, she's putting it in ice. And she's leaving it there because it has to. So, so what it did is it brought out the, the color of the skin. It, it brought out, it's a chemical reaction actually. It, it cleaned it and um, it brought out some of the, the, the enzymes. It, it started to cook it. And then she's going to shock it so immediately the, uh, the cooking. Stop. Now she's removing all the water. Shaking it up, making sure it's dry. She can get it. She can't get it totally dry though. So what she's going to do next is she's going to take it. And she's going to put it on paper towels to drain it. And leave it on there until all the excess water gets washed up. Does anybody grow some Yeah, we've got, got a ton at home, so I'm washing this. I can't wait to put it in the freezer. We have, um, we tried a new one this year. I don't know if anyone's ever grown, have you ever grown down the pile of squash? It's as prolific as zucchini, not as big, uh, but it's vine. It's an actual winter squash, and it tastes like a cross between butternut and sweet potato. We also call it sweet potato squash. Is, what's the color? What's, is it orange? No, it's <coughs> yellow with green stripes. Oh, interesting. It's you absolutely. Eat the skin. You eat the skin. Yeah, it's real thin skin. Okay. What I did is I followed them out and uh, put in the. the Ritz cracker with crab meat and, and some lobster meat and wrapped it up in foil and grilled it. It was, it was to die for. What was the name of it? Delicata. Delicata. It was delicious. Delicata. Because, you know, sometimes the, the big winter squash, they, they take a little while, you know, but this one is prolific as a, as a summer squash, but just something different. I like to try some. I also did, oh, back to, back to work here. She's bagging them now. She used the cheap, the cheaper method, and she's putting them in the freezer bag. Let's see how she takes the air out of them. She's going to use some good old elbow grease. So also when I can, the other thing that comes in handy, I, I probably have 10 of them. If you're a gardener, you have a little shopping tag. Yep. I use them outside in the garden for my tag. I use them, you know, to label on my bags, and I use them uh, for my canning tag, the, the jars as well, the mason jars. So that's what she's doing. And then she's got a whole bunch more she has to do after this one. <laughs> Go ahead, Eric. To the side, you're going to do it out. So everybody learned, a lot of us learned canning from our mothers and our grandmothers and, and what have you. And a lot of people did it not according to the, the book or what have you and ended up fine. You know, but there isn't, we never know what's in our food and we never know this, you know, this bacteria or whatever. So, so it, with this class and with this presentation, I'll do a little emphasis on, on, uh, on safety. So a water bath, I'll just show you what I use. Uh, this, is, this is my water bath can. 
good old lots of fun. So that's basically what I do. It can accommodate the little jars that look like this or the big ones. what I use. But uh, for the water bath can, what you're looking to do is you're looking for a high acid food. As you know, uh, tomatoes are a high acid uh, food. Some people actually say it's a fruit. And you can can tomatoes using a water bath canner even if you uh, claim oil and herbs. And sometimes people use it in the next video, you'll see the lady that used, puts, chops up some, some garlic and some onions, and she also uses a water bath canner. She's very lively, and it's a nice video, which is why I put it in here. I would err on the side of caution if I made that recipe that she's going to make, and I would actually do it in a pressure can. Also, uh, a lot of people like to, let me just show you what my friend Angela did here. I see them. A lot of people like to, to pickle. And the reason why you can, you, you didn't use a pressure canner, right? You use a, pit, a pot. So the, the reason why people, um, uh, you, you know, you can, you can uh, don't need a pressure canner for pickling is because the vinegar is high in acid. So uh, any kind of pickle, a lot of times at the end of the year, people cut up their tomatoes, their pickles, even their zucchini, they, they cut them up fine and make like a pickle, like a relish a garden relish, general garden relish, put some flavors in there. And those can be water bath can, can. And um, fruit, I, I last last couple of years, unfortunately I don't work with this gentleman anymore, I gave him some peppers and eggplant, and he gave me some of his pears from his tree, and I, I didn't, I have them, and um, I, I canned a lot of those. Um, also jellies and jams, you use a water bath canner as opposed to, because uh, because I, I, I believe the, the fruit is is a high acid as well. Uh, the, the pressure canning, chili, anything you can actually pressure can meat. So if you want to take and make, for example, a thing of pasta meatballs or what have you, you can actually pressure can that as well on our chili with, with beef in it. Beef and beans. Also, I say beets. If you pickle beets, I believe you can probably use a water bath can because it goes under the, the pickled vegetables. But but basically, other than that, you would uh, you would uh, pressure can them. Uh, same as carrots or green beans. You can freeze green beans as well, or or you can pressure can. Them. And also, if you make that fancy sauce, the spaghetti sauce with peppers, onions, and garlic. Uh, I I would use a, a pressure can and, and just let me show you what they look like. They're kind of clunky. I don't know how much they cost. I think maybe 60 bucks or something. But they look like this. This is probably the same way they always look. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it has a series of weights yeah. that you end up. It, it, it locks somehow or another. It goes on and it locks down. And depending upon what you have and the size of the, the, the jars, um, it, it'll tell you how, how many of these weights you have to have on the top and how long to actually uh, pressure can them. So this is what it looks like. You also have to put something in, and I think it's probably maybe a little vinegar or something in there as well uh, in the water from the can. But that's basically what the, uh, the water, like the uh, pressure can looks like. Probably been the same for hundred years. So, did you say you put vinegar in the can? No. No, in the water. In the water, because there's some kind of something that develops, like a deposit or some kind of mineral deposit, and they say to put some vinegar in there. So, but so you can just put like the beef and carrots in the can by themselves. Yeah, you can put them in the can by themselves. You don't have to add anything if you press it. So and if you're not pressure canning, you would add vinegar? Yeah, there's a whole other recipe that you would have to look up that, that okay. uses vinegar. So, yeah, yeah. And yeah. fill a jar with carrots and beans. Okay. 
your freshy panty without your, your, your water bath panty? No, water in the shower. Oh, like, like or in the jar. Right. Then you can gotcha. Okay. So I do want to um, tell you a little bit about some of these tools. Okay. So in this kit, Eric, if you get out of that presentation, mm -hmm. um, just close it out. It's called August 30th. And come back into it again, and, and we're going to try to get that video up. So. These are the jar, the, the packages that I got. I get one a year. I mean, at least, at least one of each size a year. There's several sizes of these, from little tiny, uh, little tiny ones. I don't know whether they're four ounces, probably, that I use for dried herbs and etc. Um, then we have these, and then we have uh, this this larger size. I think they cost eight something or nine something. Uh, for for twelve of them, so they're quite reasonable, and I get them, I get them in Belling, Bellingham. Well, I get them at Walmart, so you can get them pretty much anywhere. Uh, Ball is the is the most common brand that that I see. I'm sure there are others, although there are multiple sizes and, and different shapes. Some of them are just kind of straight, and this, these are kind of curved. There are basically two sizes of the lids. There's a wide mouth. The wide mouth, yeah. The wide, and I find those easier if you're doing if you're doing green beans and you want them all stuffed up. Like let me just show you. This would have probably been easier, maybe easier, more uniform in a, in a wide mouth. I'm not picking on you here. I didn't bring my food, so mm -hmm. mine's gone. So, um, so, so in any case, um, also obviously, you can use these jars. Is is you know until they break, obviously it's glass, right? But anytime you uh, you can, you have to get these, you have to use new ones. You can save the old ones for like leftovers or what have you, but you, you're not supposed to can with them uh, more than once. Are you gonna die if you do? I don't know, but uh, I'm gonna teach a little bit about it. I'll tell you, I've been used for rings for guys. So the rubber, it's the rubber piece that you're more concerned about. Yeah. Yeah. The rings so, have all the seals. Well, they, they also, you see they degrade, they rust pretty easily. I'm sure, you know, you play it by, you play, you know. You, Depends on how long it's been <laughs> Yeah, that's right. But what they say, once they're canned, you know, once you can with them, you don't use them the second time for canning. And it's cheap enough. I got the 10, the 10. Ten of these and ten of these. I think it was two dollars and ninety-eight cents at at Wall. Oh, a, a dozen, not, not ten dozen. So, uh, so I also bought uh, a little. I actually have one of these at home, but Lord knows where all that stuff is. So, I got another one. Uh, so, to let you know what what this kit does is this is a little handy dandy. Oh. This fits in the little one and the big one. You really need one because it's a very sloppy job. It is a messy job canning, and especially when you're doing. Um, fruit in you know your your uh, jellies or what have you can, can make a big deal. Um, this this is what you use to to lift the jars with here. This one and you don't want to ah. touch the stuff because they're all um, you know because they're all sterilized. You'll see the, the video. But this is a little a little magnet. I take this thing and I stick it right on my fridge. So uh, and this here, when you when you can your foods, depending upon uh, what recipe well, yeah, pretty much depending upon what recipe you use. Ball has a lot of recipes online as well. Uh, but they tell you uh, you each of them has a different what they call a head space. So you do need some space between your food and the top because food expands throughout this canning process. So here's your measure measurement here. Um, you know, maybe that's a quarter of an inch and a half an inch and whatever it is. I can't even read. But in any case, you you uh, you know make sure that you have that much clearance when you when you do it. I just I don't really use this thing. I just kind of eyeball it after a while. 
So, how you doing, Eric? We make out all right. All right, let's go. Let's let's see what we did. Let's try it. Come on, come on. All in. This. Got it. Yeah. I have no idea. I have no idea. This is not a good one to do this. That's all right. We talked to the other one, right? We talked to this one. Okay. <laughs> all right, folks. I was here from four o'clock, four thirty or five o'clock, making sure all this audio oh. worked. I had Lisa here with me. She was great. So anyway. Luckily, I listened to this, this video. I, I chose it. I listened to like a hundred of them. So, Ian, this, this video is going to be available. The whole presentation is going to be available. So, if we have, if we get your emails, we'll, we'll send them up. We have a YouTube channel where okay. we can put all this kind of stuff. So anyway, this lady, this lady's telling you that it's not that hard to can, uh, and you don't need all kinds of complicated equipment. Of course, what she's going to do is she's going to can uh, using her heirloom. Her you just you see them. She has some absolutely gorgeous heirlooms made of. You see all those bits. You, yeah, it, this, the color on this projector isn't all that great. But she's also using her herbs from her garden. She's using onion from her garden, and she's using garlic. By the way, October is the time to plant your garlic as long as you make sure you mulch it over so it doesn't freeze, freeze to death. And what she's doing is she's chopping everything up and she's going to roast it in the oven. The reason she's roasting it is because she thinks it has a more caramelized flavor under the high heat. So she's going to she's going to roast that. And she's using uh, she's using a, a, a pot of water, heat, uh, a water can, and she's using a special basket. I don't have a special basket. I take the stuff. I take the stuff using this. And I put a I put them in, but she has a special basket. She's going to tell you that uh, to sterilize everything. So she's going to drop she's going to drop those jars, those lids, and um, in those little pots. She's going to drop them all into that water, and she's going to boil them for about five minutes. Now the jury's out on this also because some people just take the the whole thing is you don't want any bacteria in your food because you, you can save your can for a number of years. So you don't you don't really want it. You're trying to kill all the bacteria. So uh, some people just put them through the dishwasher, right. and some people do. Some people eat, put baby you know with their with their baby bottles. They put them through the dishwasher, right. and some people the old school is to is to uh, is to boil it. Certainly, one thing is certain that that's a that's a thorough job. Is, uh, is when you when you boil it. So she's using regular tongs that you have in the kitchen. She doesn't have the fancy ones. I always figure that it's good to have the good tools to do something a lot. I got a, I got a set of knives from that my nephew was selling from Cutco. My God, my goodness, they cost a fortune. But I don't need a mandolin. I don't. You know, what I mean, it, I, it's it's a cool thing for me. It saves a lot of time. So she's taking them all out. Everything's draining on a, on a towel. She's boiling for like five minutes. Good roll and boil for five minutes. So don't worry about the glass cracking. It's not going to its, its tempered. It's, it's meant for that. So I use my mason jars for everything. Buttons. And I, I just make mason jars for everything. If I have buy new ones every year. Oh yeah, I know. Yeah. So she's spooning the stuff in there, and she's aware. She says that in that tomato, see hers is nice and chunky. She didn't put it into a blender and all that. It's nice and chunky. So did she boil her 
for her spoon that she just used? I think I would I would assume that you would with with boil. I would assume so. I didn't I didn't see you do it, but the protocol is to boil it to boil everything. So she's talking about his head space, and she used a three quarter of an inch head space because when she pans those, the food is going to expand, and she doesn't want any issues with it. Now there's another. There's something else about, about tomato sauce. Some people, I don't know why, but some people take the seeds and remove them and they blanch the tomatoes and they take the skins and throw them away or whatever they do with them. When I make my tomatoes, personally for canning, I take the tomatoes, I take the stems off, but I take the, the whole tomato, seeds, skin and all, that's the fiber, that's the good stuff, right? And I pulse it in my chopper or put it in my blender or whatever, and that's what I use. I don't like to waste any of it. So. I was also going to ask you, because I did it once with a blanching and can I spread tomatoes? It's so watery. They are. There's a secret to that as well. When you're making your sauce with tomatoes, it, and Eric and I have talked about this. It comes up just about every, every time. What happens with tomatoes is uh, your big beef steaks, even your cherry tomatoes and uh, big boys, uh, uh, early girls, they have a very high water content. In order, in order to make, you, you, you're going to have a pot that's this high, and by the time it's condensed enough, uh, it's going to be only, you're only going to get that much out of it. So you have to, in order to get a thick sauce, you're going to have to use a paste tomato. I use uh, Roma's. Roma's tomatoes are uh, this, this small. They grow about, they, 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 they're quite prolific. Also, uh, San, San Marzano's, uh, which, which are kind of long, they, and they're, uh, they're heirloom, heirloom tomatoes, and those are paste tomatoes. They'll help it thicken up. And if it doesn't thicken up enough, don't be silly and, and boil it. Put a can of tomato paste in. Angela told me last time that that tomato, that tomato paste is actually good for you. So, so anyway, so what she did is she, she canned them, and she put them in the water bath can. You know, I don't know whether it's 20 minutes. You just follow the instructions depending upon the size of the can that you use. And she took them out and and you, you listen to them. You have you know six or eight of them, whatever, on the table, and you hear them go, you know, click, 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 so you know they're actually sealing. So if it's sealed properly, you can take that lid off. You can turn it upside down and shake the heck out of it. That lid's not coming off. So that's how you can tell this is good. And if there is one that doesn't have a good solid lid, put it in the fridge and use it within the next couple of days. It's going to be fine. Don't, don't, certainly don't waste anything. So, so that's basically the, uh, the, the can. You keep everything clean. If it's not a fruit or, or a tomato, uh, you know, uh, then I would, I, would, I would prefer to that you crush, crush it can. It can last a very long time. So, okay, anybody have any questions about that? Yes. So if you were to do um, the water bath and you want to do like a jelly or a jam, can you just make it without the sugar or does it have to have an additive in it? Well, you know what, there are recipes. I don't know. There are recipes with just the fruit. With no, agave and stuff, or just the fruit? Just the fruit or a jam with no sugar? Well, I mean, I make like jam without any sugar. So that would be my concern. Did I you try agave? I could even use maple syrup, maple syrup or honey. Just um, it. But I would want to try to do it and have it preserved without adding something extra into it. So I would look into, as you said, uh, maybe maple syrup, maybe agave, maybe uh, stevia, which is a derivative yeah. of the plant, and so is agave. Mm -hmm. If you want to just do the just plain old fruit, I'm not sure whether you're going to get a, enough of a sweet taste rendering with that process, but yeah. it's worth it's worth a shot. Okay. So, I'm not, has anyone ever done that? <laughs> yeah, I, I always, I mean, I don't like to eat too much sugar either. Uh, so, as a matter of fact, I just put that out there on, on my, I, I have a Facebook page, gardening page, it has 12,000 members from across the world. Anytime I want to know something, I, I put it out there and I get it, I usually get a ton of responses. And I, and I put something out there about, uh, was I was thought apple pie actually it was like is there anything I can I use maple syrup and make you know an apple pie out of it and the answer was yeah you just try it because I actually think some of that you know like a, a organic ma maple syrup actually has a uh, raw you know it, ha it has a better 
better flavor than just once you stay away from the cane sugar, you really don't like it. If yeah. you do any kind of um, substitution, you usually do the same amount. So if you were going to put a half a cup of sugar in it, if you don't like it too sweet, you can just put a quarter of a cup. But usually it's a one. It's a one to one. So it's. When I bake, I don't use cane sugar. I use maple syrup, or I'll use honey, and it's a it's the same amount. It's a half half cup of sugar. I use a half half cup of maple syrup. Oh, no and if I don't want it too sweet, then I'll just you know maybe do an eighth of a cup. Or Have you tried agave? I do use the. I don't like. I think that the. It depends on the brand that you use of state of the stevia, and if you do liquid or powder, I find it has can have. Um, an aftertaste to it, oh, okay. uh, and I try to yeah, I try to stay away from that. It can be a little bit bitter, so I usually replace honey. I know you can't use honey for kids a year or younger, oh, so but I, so, but I always use maple syrup is usually my go-to. And then the other thing is obviously the older the fruit, the sweeter the fruit. Mm -hmm. So if you use something, you know, because of the, it breaks down like you know, like strawberries or, or berries or whatever, you get them when they're too young and they're, and they're bitter anyway. But why to use a more mature fruit and then yeah that's interesting interesting question sorry i couldn't have, couldn't give you more information on it so the last one is uh, dehydrating and uh, i've done some about this as a matter of fact i have italian basil high basil lemon basil sage uh, cilantro they say parsley and giant parsley. Um, what else? Beautiful sage, beautiful. Mint. And what I'm doing is I'm, I, I have to harvest them. I mean, I, my tomato, I have peppers that, I, that they're not getting the sun because my herbs grow so big. So I'm, you know, cutting them down and, and, and putting them in my, my dehydrator. Uh, they're easy to have it. And like I say, I'm going to use the little mason jars and put them in there and, and um, give them for, for Christmas gifts to my. I do have a few friends that are also foodies. I'm a foodie. I love, you know, love food, love to eat. So, um, so fruits, veggies, herbs, and even meats. This, plant, this lecture really isn't about meats, but um, they can all be dehydrated using a, a good quality uh, dehydrator. So, People make jerky all the time. I guess once it's dehydrated, it, it is a it is a good low low fat alternative, high protein snack for people. I just chop it on a piece of beef doesn't appeal to me, but a lot a lot of people do it. Um, so what to do with this dehydrated food? You pack it in. Uh, you can use your mason jars, or you can use your seal in the your your food saver bags as well, uh, and it, it'll last a real, real long time. So if you put it in a mason jar, because I actually we have a dehydrator and it's never been opened, and I want to use it, I just don't know how to use it, and my concern was storage. Um, so you're saying that once the product is dehydrated. You can put it in a mason jar, even though there's air in the mason jar. I would it think so. Yeah, it because you'd be rot. Moved. So if something needs liquid in it really to rot. Okay. And and you removed all the liquid out of it. So um, yeah, I, okay. I think that I, I I think you can put it in a mason jar. What a lot of people, you know, what I'm thinking of doing is I've grown celery, I have onions, I have garlic, carrots. So what I'm thinking is dehydrating all that and then layering it, putting some pasta in there and some chicken bouillon or something and making little little layered soup, you know, for Christmas, Christmas yeah, yeah. gifts, you know, for a little gingham thing around the lid. And, um, and then, so once you do that, then, then you can um, just add the liquid in it and the stuff will, will, will pretty much hydrate that. Some things are dehydrate, rehydrate better than other things. Go ahead. Okay, you can't see this. This is actually a dehydrator. But it looks kind of crummy on here. Um, so I have one, and, and, I, and I want to show it to you. This is a fairly cheap 
for, I think it costs like $39, $40 or something on, um, on Amazon. And it has a temperature control. It goes up to 169 degrees. And it has several of these trays. So you just kind of fill up the trays. If you only need two, you only fill up two. And as you can see, it's not a real sturdy thing. But it costs $39. So, and that's basically, I layered all my herbs. I think they took probably about, I'd say maybe three hours to do a whole, a whole bunch of herbs. And the these aren't off. I think I may have like 10 of these. But you just put in what you need, what you're dehydrating. So, that's basically what I used. They also have, these, they call them Excalibur, but I'm, whatever, I'm, I'm gonna get that video going, the next video going, so, one way or another. Um, so, they cost like $200, but what it is, it's like a little, it's pretty big, right? It's pretty big, and, and you, you pull out drawers. And instead of that one that has a fan on the bottom, the fan is on the side and it goes all the way through, but they cost like more than $200. It's expensive, you know. So, but, you know, I may, I'm not a big dehydrator. I dehydrate my herbs. I may be tempted to dehydrate, as I say, these little veggies uh, to make some soups and stuff. But I don't do jerky and all that, and, and, but, but, but the, the dehydrators can be, can be fairly expensive. So, um, but it is, a, you do get good quality out of them. And they last the longest, um, you know, they, they'll last pretty much, they say they'll last forever. So if something's dehydrated, because there's, there's no water in it, so it'll last, last pretty much forever. Um, although, eating something that's 20 years old doesn't, doesn't seem to appeal to me. But, <laughs> yeah, right, right. Um, so the, another way you can dehydrate is you can air dehydrate. You know, things that are fairly simple, but you know, they may spoil you, you don't know if it has a high water content. I know you can probably just hang your herbs up, but. Yeah, what? I tried some basil this summer and then it didn't work. Or, yeah. What happened? It was okay it with rosemary. It was all brown. Yeah. What's okay, okay with rosemary? I didn't put rosemary in my lotion. Yeah. Oh, no, it depends on the herb. Like rosemary, it, because it's so, it's because it's so woody. Anyway. It is, it's, yeah. And it's hardy, it, that is one of the few things that does really well. You can hang it like that and you're good to go, but yeah. some of the others, yeah, they do get yeah. brown and not looking so good. Mm -hmm. So the other thing is, a lot of, a lot of times you can, you can dry something out on a very, very low setting in the oven. It's fairly quick, but. I tried that and it was, it was a waste of time. No, no, no. I, no. I had to toss everything. Oh. Yeah, it did, it did. Yeah. Yeah. It was Most apple. Don't have a low temperature. Yeah. So this temperature, this goes up to start, the highest that could go is 165. I think the lowest my oven goes is 200. Mine's 170. Oh, it is one, maybe it is, yeah. Yeah, maybe it is 170. Yeah, so it's right around that. Yours is 120? 140. 140. 140. Oh, yeah, yeah. So there's a little bit of overlap there. You know, for those people who want to do a lot of dehydrating, but obviously don't want to get the big, you know, two hundred dollars for that mega unit. So, personal preference, I guess. But okay, I'm gonna do this. Bear with me. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm getting here. Okay. Oops. We're recording too. Oh, we missed this one. I'm going to get out of this. This is the coolest. The reason I'm doing this and not talking to it because I can talk until the cows come home, so not a big deal. But this lady has some really, really cool ideas. And this is specifically on dehydration? It is. Oh, you know what I'm gonna do? If she can't, I'm gonna pull up, I'm gonna pull up the link. Can we like make apple chips and like 
You could do that. I have a friend who has hair extensions. Okay. And they're, that's my rule. I like it. I think he has Yeah. Get a good one. Yeah. I'm sorry. I mean, like I say, they're expensive. But um, but if you're going to use it. Yeah. You're so much better. You're definitely better off. All right, I'm going to either do this. If I can't do it, I'm going to actually just go to the link and go right to YouTube. Yep. I'm not going to let this get us down here. Yeah. the way you've hooked it up to the, uh, the way we have it hooked up to the speakers. Because right. remember before, it actually said audio in on the display on the receiver, and it doesn't say it anymore. All right, let's see.